Richard Castellano is our guest today on Omelette. He's won Tony and Oscar nominations for his role in Lovers and Other Strangers. Now he's playing the role of Pop, otherwise known as Joe, as Joe on Sons. You have a daughter, don't you, Joe, in real life? I bet you're yes. a good father. Oh, I, I hope I was, you know. She's 21 now. That's right. She's in the same business, isn't she? That's right. Actress. Yeah, some Did six years of study and a year of Broadway and a TV series behind her. Some pretty good uh, resume she's got. Did you encourage her into uh, the same business you were in? Or? No, that was all part of her own thing. She made up her own mind, and uh, you could see the material. I'd watch her on stage and watch the other, you know, the other people, the seeing who they were watching. She was on a show with six or seven people, and they were watching her. I knew she was good. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you a good critic, or does she want your advice? I'm a terrible critic, and I'm pretty rough, I think, you know. Isn't that really the best approach to take, though, rather than to try to gloss it over? Well, if it's bad, it should be called bad. Uh, I got used to that early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fascinating how you were, what, 30 before you all of a sudden decided, hey, what I really want to be is an actor. Well, I was 28, but uh, it was a carryover from when I was a little baby, you know. I used to go to motion pictures with my mother, sit there, watch through the thing. I remember a picture called Desire with... Uh, Gary Cooper and Molina Dietrich, and he made me laugh and cry, and I said, gee, I'd like to be like that guy. Uh, you know, I thought maybe I'd even grow up and look like him. Gary Cooper, the only other thing I ever got off it was the yup. Uh, <laughs> was it easy for you to break into it? Did you have certain people you remember that helped you get established as an actor? Oh, I remembered them, but nobody remembered me. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a fight all the way, and it still is. You know, it's funny, but you're only as good as the last job that you do. So you have to be pretty good to, uh, to make a living out of this business. Uh, and you have to be prepared to take the bounces along with it, too. The story that you're in is based a great deal on an uncle in real life. Uncle Charlie, was he a colorful guy? Well, yeah, he was. It was really terrific. A throwback, you know, 1930s man. We all remember. We all remember when times were a little bit different, when people were a little bit more optimistic about the future. And uh, I wish Charlie was around to see it today. He worked hard, you know. He worked through a depression, through a world war, and then he just up and died. Mm -hmm. All used up at 50. Do you think parents had a different relationship in bygone days than they do today with their children? Well, I'm sure they do. <laughs> I How really so? am. Well, before it was, you know, like, do it this way or break your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you would never say that. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is different today. I know that uh, in doing this show, I try to be both father and mother, which is quite biologically impossible, and I really wouldn't want to. I dig being a man. I really do. How does it feel being a girl? <laughs> anyway, that's what goes through his mind. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's particularly difficult? So many marriages are breaking up, and fathers are taking responsibility for the children. you think that's really a difficult role for a man to have? Well, that's why I thought it was so relevant. I mean, between divorce and, and in some cases, in his case, he's a widower, uh, it was really a relative part of today's society. One parent acting as both mother and father. You know, it used to be the man goes out and goes to work, kills the buffalo, brings it home, and the wife prepares it. Now there are no more buffalo. But uh, it's rough bringing up. Are you around. uncomfortable, or do you have many comments to make about the whole women's movement of women having more independence? Oh, no. I really believe that women should have exactly the same independence that men do. I think that every woman should be given a shovel about that big, about that long, and shovel the uh, tar the way I did when I was 15. Uh, that would really, you know, give us equality. And I think that anybody who could do that could probably dump me, too. <laughs> no, my daughter, my daughter is taking up, uh, she's got a brown belt now in judo. And uh, yeah, she's getting tough. Weighs 105 pounds. Uh, but she can handle herself. Yeah, she's got to. Uh, women have to be able to handle themselves in these tough times. Men aren't doing the job that they were doing 30 years ago either. Mm -hmm. I used to stand on the corner and watch the girls go by. Now I stand on the corner and see if I see another man. <laughs> but you did have such a variety of occupations. You were successful in the construction business. Many, many other things you've done. Mm. 
Does that help prepare you for a... You mean does it comes in handy later as an actor to have the success time. help you? Well, it is, draw the wide oh, range, the wide range. Of things you've been involved in. Yeah, it helps. It does. I mean, you don't know where it's going to come in, but it, usually it would. You know, it, anything that you've done or anything that you can add to, any kind of research that you do always helps. In other words, what you haven't lived, what you can parallel, mm -hmm. uh, can be helpful. Oh, you're a delightful yeah. person. I bet you're nice to get along with. Not I at all. Can't stand myself. Oh. Thank you so much for being with us on Omelette. Thank you. Richard Castellano. We'll be back in a moment.